Welcome to Disciples Net Church. We hope that you feel God's presence among us as we worship together. We invite you to come today in a spirit of humility. We invite us all to come today in a spirit of humility, caring about the world in which we live, looking to our God to lift us up. Welcome again to Disciples Net. Let us come together and worship. join me in prayer to God. Loving and gracious God, we come today not knowing how to name the cares that threaten to overwhelm us. Seeing the brokenness in the world, we feel powerless to deal with the magnitude of the confusion, despair, and evil all around us. Yet you promise that no words are needed, that in our most desperate moments, we need only to lean into your arms and you will be there. Today we lift our feeble prayers to you where all power lies, asking only that you reach into our hearts and lift that fear and despair, transforming it into hope for the future and strength, not only to carry on, but to thrive and flourish in serving you. Give us what we need to be your visible presence in this world. Fill us with your love so that we may love. Shower us with grace that we may share grace with all your creation and children. Remind us of the assurance of your constant presence that we may offer hope to all who suffer. Keep our hearts compassionate, always aware of the brokenness we see, but secure in knowing that whatever small good we might do is magnified by your unfathomable power and goodness. We have been called for your purpose. Do not let us forget that. May we find strength to live up to that calling and bring healing throughout your creation. 
dwell always in us, that we can live up to the unique vision you have for each one. We praise you continually for your marvelous works and give thanks for everything you have done for us. Filled with awe, we say, Holy, 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 for you are the Most High. Blessed be your name forever. We offer these prayers in the name of your Son, God incarnate, who taught us to pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, Reading from Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. H.D. was a good old egg until the day of the accident. I saw a picture of the scene, and afterwards he just lay there, shattered and broken in a puddle of yellow and white goo. You may know the story, too, and if you do, say the rest of it with me. And all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. This is a very old nursery rhyme that comes out of England. It seems to have been a riddle to start with. And I read that in practically every culture there's some version of it. One of the earliest versions recorded of this nursery rhyme goes like this. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. 
Four score men and four score more could not make Humpty what he was before. Now, as a child, I couldn't stand how Humpty's story ended. I wanted some fairy godmother, some genie, to wave a wand and change things and put him back how he had been before, unbroken and whole. And if a fairy godmother couldn't come flying in, well, I wanted one more chapter where something would happen to fix poor Humpty. I couldn't imagine what this would be because in our home with four small children helping around the kitchen, egg tragedies were all too common. As we would gaze sadly at an egg's demise on the floor, it would be obvious to us that such a thing could not be fixed. The pieces were too broken. But I'm not here to talk about eggs and fairy tales. I'm here to talk about broken pieces in life and what happens when utter, terrible tragedies strike us. I only brought up Humpty's name and face and story because it's a lot less painful than to think about real-life people, real-life stories, someone you've known, perhaps yourself, or perhaps someone you've only heard about. Real-life stories that have left people's lives shattered and broken, and them there wondering, is there any way to pick up these pieces to put them back together again? Well, friends, I'm here to give you some good news. God can do amazing things with broken pieces. I'd like to talk about those broken pieces for just a few minutes today. When I was a child, I was most drawn to the healing stories. I think in a naive or a beginning faith, maybe we all are, where he could say a word or touch a person and they could instantly be healed. I think it was almost an annoyance to me where he would put into the story some extra words about faith or some churchy stuff, about their sins being forgiven. An example is in the ninth chapter of Matthew where Jesus heals the man with paralysis. Let's read. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven to you, or to say, Arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And the paralytic arose and departed to his house. I don't know, but I think I wanted to see Jesus celebrating this miracle of this man healed from paralysis. Yet Jesus seemed to want to talk about faith, to give us the vision of the long view of this kingdom of God. And if you think about it, life does go on. It's not just for that snapshot moment. That man that was healed of paralysis no doubt had other troubles and ailments in life and died. The ones who were healed of other diseases would be sick again and have troubles in life and eventually die. Even Lazarus and Jairus' daughter and the widow's son would grow old and die someday. So what matters then? We see this perspective in the letter from the Apostle Paul that he writes from prison to the churches in Rome. Many people can quote these passages from memory. Perhaps you can. And as they did all those years ago, they continue to give courage and meaning to people in times of tragedy. One reason that this sermon came to mind today is the special meaning in my life of October the 4th, the day that this will be aired on Sunday. As a child, we always observed October the 4th as the birthday of my brother. But we never celebrated the birthday you see, because two years before I was born, my brother Terry had died in a tragic fire. A little three-year-old boy in the garage next door where he was playing with two other boys. And the garage had exploded into flames, 
where the older boy had poured gasoline out into a toy car, they think, and the hot water heater's pilot light had ignited the flames. The older boy had come running out of the garage right before the explosion, and when Mother looked into the flaming garage, she saw a lone figure, her son, and rushed into the flames, putting her head down, and pulled him out. He was too badly burned to survive, and a few hours later he was gone. My mother was terribly burned, over 40% of her body. Mother was seven months pregnant at the time, and in those first days and weeks and months, there were many times the doctors didn't think that the baby would survive or my mother. The baby, my older sister, was born healthy and has led and continues to lead a long and wonderful life. My mother, well, she lived a long and wonderful life too, passing away at the age of 90 just a few years ago. As a child, I remember her hands being purplish and crinkled from the scar tissue. And I grew up knowing about the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ through that teaching. But I also learned some important lessons from her. I remember us asking her, Mom, didn't you ever feel bitter in those long months lying there in the hospital and all that pain? How did you find the strength to go on? She was a woman of great faith, and she would quote her favorite passage, Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to God's purpose. Mom went on to explain that not everything that happens is good. Some things can be horrible, as the fire was that took Terry's life and another little boy that had been playing inside that garage. But that when tragic things happen, that God can help us build good out of that. She also said that as she lay there and was overwhelmed with grief and sadness as one day followed the next, that she had to come to a decision in her life, that she could be overwhelmed, consumed by the bitterness, or she could choose to live the life that God did give her, living into the text of that scripture, that things good could come out of even the worst of tragedies. And so she said, I chose hope. And I chose faith in God, that God would use me in whatever ways to bring a bit of light, to bring a bit of hope to other people who had had tragedy. One day she and I talked about a tiny candle burning. And as it would enter a room that was complete darkness, that that room would no longer be complete darkness even if that tiny space of the candle burning was one billionth of what the rest of the room had, that light will always cause darkness to diminish when light comes into it, but that darkness can never overcome light. But she said, you have to look at the things that you have today and put them to use because God can take all things and make them work together for good. And there's one more lesson you are never ever alone. Some people on earth will ask, where was God when something bad happened? God is closest to us in our times of great need. There's a song that reminds us of God's presence in all times, and we've sung it today, No, Never Alone. In my family, there's some inside meaning. We call this Terry's song, because Terry learned this song, No, Never Alone, in church. And when he was a little boy, sometimes my grandmother or mother would rock him and sing this song to him. And sometimes when they'd be busy, he'd be in a rocking chair and he'd just rock back and forth. And as a little boy, he would sing, No, no, never alone. No, no, not alone. That song brought comfort when Terry passed away. And as my mother and grandmother and the rest of the family would think about that Terry is not alone for now or eternity. My friends, whatever has befallen you, whether it's tragedy in your past or your present or in the life of a loved one, 
or even the fears of something that is to come. Let me give you the assurance that God can do marvelous, amazing things with broken pieces. God is doing amazing and marvelous things in your life. Amen. I am convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. I think it's significant that Paul begins that list of things that will not be able to separate us from the love of God with death itself. Here at this table, we remember that Jesus went to the cross and died in order to free us from the power of sin and death, that God was not willing to allow even death to separate us from the love of God and from each other. So let us remember the love of God so great that even death would not overcome it. Let us pray. Our
our loving God. We thank you for these symbols that sit before us, the bread and the cup, that remind us of your love which was so great that even death and sin could not overcome it. As we take this bread and this cup, fill us again with your Spirit, that we can take this good news of your love which knows no bounds into our world and share it with the world that is longing to hear it. In Jesus' name, amen. We do remember, on the night that Jesus went to his own death, he met with his disciples and he took the bread and when he blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to them and said, This is my body, broken for you. Eat this and remember me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, This cup is the new covenant which is poured out in my blood. As often as you drink it, Remember me. And so we come and remember the love of God in bread broken, in wine poured, in body broken, in blood shed. Come, join the feast. As you go from this moment forward into the world, may you make the choice to follow the one who can do amazing things with broken pieces and is not with you only for an instant, but will be with you for all eternity. Go now, never alone.